Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we can see fungal staining. Fungal staining, it is widely used in diagnostic microbiology or mycology labs for the diagnosis of various fungal infections or for identifying various fungal pathogens. The fungal staining methods, they are categorized into two types. They are wet bound and differential staining preparations. And we can choose the method depending upon the nature of the specimen received in our laboratory. First, we can see the wet mount preparations. Wet mount preparations, they are widely used in the diagnostic laboratories. And it is for the direct demonstration of the fungus. It helps to study the morphological characteristics of the fungus. The main wet mount preparations used are listed below. KOH mount, India ink stain, nigrosin stain, calcafluor white stain, lactophenol cotton blue stain, fall stain, neutral red stain and disonium blue bee stain. First we can see potassium hydroxide wet mount. It is also known as KOH mount. It is the most simple, cheap and reliable method used in the diagnostic labs and it is the primary screening tool used in the microbiology labs. Here we are using aqueous KOH solution. It helps to soften and digest the protein debris present in the specimens and it helps to dissolve the cementing materials holding the keratinized tissues. So we can see the fungal elements more clear and more visible. Ingredients are KOH 10% glycerol 10% distilled water 80 ml. Glycerol is adding as an hygroscopic agent that is it helps to prevent drying. Concentration of this KOH can be increased up to 40% depending upon our use and dimethyl sulfoxide can also be used as a cleansing agent. Wet mount dimethyl sulfoxide can be examined immediately after preparation. Two types of KOH mount are widely used, slide KOH and tube KOH. First we can go through slide KOH. In slide KOH, it is widely used for examining skin scraping, scales, nail clippings and biopsy specimens. The specimen, it must be transferred to a clean slide. We have to pour 10% KOH solution on the specimen. Then place a cover slip and gently press it to get a mono layer. Excessive KOH, it must be removed and the slide, it is warmed gently. This warming, it is done in order to speed up the clearing process. And this warming also helps to remove air bubbles. Too much of warming, it can cause crystallization of KOH. So we must be careful while warming. And if we are adding DMSO, we can observe the specimen without heating. Prepared slide, it is kept for 5 to 30 minutes at room temperature and can be examined under the microscope. And a special preparation that is KOH plus Parker ink can be used as a method for the better visualization of fungal elements in the case of Malassezia species. Malassezia, it is a pathogen which is causing superficial infection in human beings. Then second one is tube KOH, mainly used for biopsy specimens. And here we take a longer time for dissolution of the specimen and homogenized biopsy specimens, they are dissolved in KOH. Mainly we are using 10% KOH. We can increase the concentration up to 40% if required. Then the, uh, this KOH suspension or the homogenized biopsy plus KOH, it must be kept in an incubator at 37 degrees Celsius overnight. And after that it is examined under the microscope by making a slight mount. And it is widely used for observing nail clippings and skin biopsies. The wet mount preparations, they are mainly observed under 10x, 20x and 40x. The KOH mount, it is widely used for screening various fungal elements such as hyphae, yeast cells, pseudohyphae and sclerotic bodies. And after examining the specimen, we, we can send the report. If there is no fungal element seen, the report must be dispatched as no fungal element seen. That's all about KOH mount. Second one is India ink stain. It's a negative staining technique. It is widely used for visualizing capsulated fungus. The capsulated yeast which is pathogenic to human beings is Cryptococcus neoformans and it can be visualized using India ink stain. Ingredients are India ink, Marthiolate and Twin 80. 
The ingredients are mixed, filtered and stored and it must be periodically filtered to remove bacterial contamination and carbon particles. And here we can see a risk of infection because there is no heating or there is no disinfectant added in the solution. So, uh, there is a high risk of infection in the case of India ink preparation. A drop of clinical specimen, it is mixed with equal volume of India ink on a slide. Then, uh, cover slip is uh, placed and generally placed. Pressed, excess ink is removed and examined under the microscope. We can see the polysaccharide capsule as a clear halo against a uh, black background. Here we can see in this diagram the capsule. Then a modification of India ink staining can be used for, uh, by using 2% chromium mercury. It helps to visualize both internal and external structures. Third one is nigrosin staining. Nigrosin staining, it's a negative staining method. It can be used as an alternative to India ink method. Ingredients are nigrosin granules and formalin. Here nigrosin, it is added to 25 ml of formalin and it is boiled in a water bath for 30 minutes. After boiling, we have to increase the volume by adding 75 ml of formalin so that we can make the volume up to 100 ml. Then filter and store. Advantages are it is better than India ink as it can last for more than one year and there is no formation of carbon particles so periodic filtering is not necessary. Similarly as we are adding formalin there is no risk of infection. Fourth one is calcafluor white staining. Calcafor white stain, it is specifically used to stain the fungal cell wall components mainly chitin. Then simple quick and reliable method. Then here we can add KOH to provide better sensitivity. Calcafor white stain, here the dye it is available as a colorless dye and it can be used as a non-toxic biological marker to demonstrate cellulose in microorganisms also. Here light blue fluorescence is produced. Ingredients are KOH. Calcafluor white dye, Evans blue and distilled water. Mix all the ingredients. After that we have to keep the reagent in the refrigerator. Evans blue enhances the detection of fungus and it is observed under fluorescent microscope. And in the, under the fluorescent microscope we can see the fungus like this. Blank of 4. 1% can be used instead of calcafluor white stain which gives less artifacts and does not get precipitated while mixing KOH. So, uh, blank of 4 it is more good than calcafluor and can be used for diagnosing uh, the various fungal infections. Fifth one is lactophenol cotton blue stain that is LPCB or LCB mount. It is widely used for studying the fungal morphology and we have already heard about LPCB in our laboratories and in our early studies. Two types of LPCB staining can be seen plain LPCB and LPCB with polyvinyl alcohol. And these are the slides which are prepared with LPCB mount. Then a plain LPCB, the ingredients are melted, phenol, lactic acid, glycerol, cotton blue and distilled water are the main ingredients. All the ingredients are mixed properly except cotton blue. We have to dissolve 0 0.05 gram of cotton blue in distilled water separately before mixing with the remaining ingredients or reagents. Phenol, it is acting as a disinfectant. Lactic acid, it preserves the morphology of the fungus. Then glycerol, it's a hygroscopic agent that is prevent drying. Then Cotton blue, it stains the outer wall of the fungus so that the fungus will be appearing in blue color. The small portion of the fungal culture, it is transferred to a clean slide. We have to add a drop of lactophenol cotton blue stain. Then we have to separate the culture properly with two teasing needles. Then put the cover slip and examine under the microscope. The edges of the cover slip, they can be sealed with nail polish to keep it for a long time. An alternative of the cover slip is that we, have, we can take a transparent adhesive tape and we have to touch the sticky surface of this tape or to the fungal colony in the petri plate. Then this sticky surface uh, with the stick to fungal colonies, they are transferred to a slide containing a drop of LPCB then examined under the microscope so that we can see the arrangement of conidia without any disturbances. Then LPCB with polyvinyl alcohol. Here the staining reagents or ingredients are polyvinyl alcohol powder distilled water. These are the additional ingredients. That is this polyvinyl alcohol it must be mixed with uh, uh, it is mixed with uh, water and it is heated at 80 degrees Celsius in a water bath and it is filtered and uh, remaining ingredients are added. Then 
uh, LPCB preparations can be permanently preserved if we are adding polyvinyl alcohol. Then LPCB bound serve as the best method for studying the morphology of the fungal isolates. All fungal pathogens in the diagnostic lab, mycology lab can be identified morphologically through this technique. Sixth one is fall stain. It is similar to LPCB. The name fall, it is derived from the initials of surnames of four scientists, Pal, Hasegawa, Ono and Lee. It contains formalin instead of phenol and methylene blue in the place of cotton blue. Seventh one is neutral red. Here it is useful and easily applicable method for the evaluation of viability of fungal elements. Here it is widely used for evaluation of the viability of fungal elements and the water soluble dye is neutral red that is neutral red it is water soluble it can be easily dissolved in water it can pass through plasma membrane of the fungal cell and it is stored in the lysosomes of viable cells and when the cell membrane and lysosomes are damaged the dye intake stops so that the non-living cells they will not uptake the or they will not take the dye so uh, we can easily easily differentiate this viable and non-viable cells uh, using this technique so it is used as a vital stain mainly for dermatophytes and candida species. Eighth one is Dysonium blue bee stain. Dysonium blue bee stain it is having a special purpose that is uh, some organisms or some fungus they are sharing some morphological and physiological characteristics. For example Basidiomycetes trichosporin and Ascomycetes geotrichum they are sharing some common features that is some morphological and physiological characters so they are often confused with each other. So uh, a method for avoiding this problem or uh, for diagnosis is using Dysonium blue bee reagent or stain. This Dysonium blue bee stain it is used for differentiation of such species of this genera. That here alkali ethanol disodium blue bee stain staining reaction is the most reliable procedure and is widely used and the positive reaction it is indicated by the appearance of a dark red or violet red color within two minutes of staining or application and here we can see trichosporin isolates they are producing this color so they are dbb positive and the geotrichum species they are dbb negative so this method can easily be used for distinguishing trichosporin and geotrichum and this dbb staining method can be used for the identity identification of yeast like fungus also. So these are the different methods which are used for wet mount uh, observation or these are the different wet mount preparations used for the identification of fungus. And we can see the differential staining techniques in the next session. Hope you all understand.